Today's episode is brought to you by Progressive, where drivers who save by switching save nearly $750 on average. Quote now at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Thanks for supporting the Fable and Folly Network. Here's another show we know you'll love. Where am I? Welcome to Desert Skies, Traveler. Your journey through the physical plane has come to an end. I am the attendant. My colleague here is the mechanic. Yo. This is your last stop on your way to the great beyond. It's our job to make sure you're prepared for the ride. Now, before hitting the road, we have an impressive selection of over 34 varieties of microwavable burritos. Um, what, what? What's going on? There's got to be a better afterlife than this. I mean, come on! Uh, that's offensive. Something seems to be wrong with me. You left something major undone. I have a life outside of this gas station, you know. You quite literally do not. Any hobbies? Nope. Ever travel? Nope. Love interests? Are you kidding? Oh my god. You're like the human version of a plain bagel. Cash register. How can I help you, attendant? Play some music? You got it. It's kind of funny, though. What I needed wasn't back there. It was here, waiting for me. I wonder what it feels like, Mac, to miss the physical plane, the people you left behind. You know, I had a wife who died three years ago. Wish I could go back. No, you don't need to go back. You just need to be here. And a new traveler approaches. Ready, team? Ready. Good. Let's do this. Find Desert Skies wherever you listen to podcasts. In this world, there are more stories than ghosts in a graveyard. Some are spooky. Some are metaphorical. Some rattle chains and play bongos. But all are worth busting. So, open up your unfinished business wide and listen. Welcome to Brushtown Stories, Episode 7, from the Diary of Bernard Glouch, The Land of the Dead. From the Diary of Bernard Glouch, World Traveler. Chapman Heath and I were in the very outskirts of the Ottoman Empire. We had gone through to the Anaza Sheikdom, which we had arrived in via boat. I had taken ill after eating some bad oysters, and was still recovering. Chapman confided that the clues leading to the lost city of the ancient Dentites was somewhere in the Armenian lands. His drive and interest seemed to wax and wane. At first he was quick to travel, but then once back in British India we had spent an extended period in the back alleys of Bombay. I was growing frustrated, but Chapman said he had to meet with some soldiers who were returning for Burma. Chapman said he had spent time with them during the Boxer Rebellion and they had an object of importance. I wasn't sure if they were real or just an excuse for him to stay in Bombay, get drunk, and enjoy the less savory aspects of the city. But in the early hours of a rather uneventful Tuesday, a man showed up, beaten, dusty, with half a nose and a thirsty throat. I learned he was Sergeant Major Elihu Rose, and the rest of his party had been killed on the road somewhere near Raipur. Elihu and Chapman talked about war. Elihu believed the European continent was doomed, and that the Kaiser and the Tsar and all the royals were going to bring the whole world crashing down. I shall try to transcribe his words as best I can remember them. The problem with peace, Elihu said, is that it makes us forget. It makes us hungry for war. What boy doesn't fantasize when he reads Byron or Shelley or some great adventure of the thrill of Trafalgar or Agincourt? We celebrate it. We eat it like jelly. We behold that souls are forged in battle, but it's the breaker of souls. It's the thresher, and we the wheat. Chapman agreed, but said it was good for business. Widows sell their flats for cheap. Grieving mothers are happy to be rid of their son's possessions. A good deal of prime real estate comes available when the boys fall in the field. I couldn't tell if it was a perverse joke or if he meant it. Chapman could sense my discomfort and said, If we spent all our time feeling bad, we'd get nothing done. If Elihu had some important object to give, I never saw it. But a day later, we were on a boat heading for the Arabian coast. And so here it comes to be that we sit in the coach speeding through the wilderness. I mentioned to Chapman that I was concerned about the route. He waved it away. The driver's a ghost, he said. 
He was a soldier and messenger who died as part of the Bashkala uprising. He was supposed to travel from Bagaran to Yerevan, but died en route. His ghost now makes the lonely journey back and forth non-stop. So the local people decided it would be best to use this ghost journey for their benefit and set him up as a coach driver and charge a fare to foreigners for his service. Or at least haul pumpkins from one place to the next. Thus his pain journey at least helps pay some small pittance to the locals. I thought he looked pale, I replied. The idea of a spectral driver oddly put me at ease. At least he's gone down this road many times before. The Fable and Folly Network supports creators of exceptional audio stories, including the one you're listening to right now. If you love our shows, we want to hear from you. Complete our listener survey at fableandfolly.com slash survey. This will help us learn more about you, what you like, what you'd like to hear more of, and how we can maintain an inclusive, safe atmosphere. As a thank you for your participation, we have extras and behind-the-scenes content from your favorite shows. Fans make the network what it is. Thanks for listening, and we can't wait to hear from you. Find our listener survey at fableandfolly.com slash survey today. Looking to get out of the ads and back to the story? Fable and Folly Plus is a new way to support the creators you love. The podcast you're listening to right now and more than 60 others can be heard ad-free for as little as $4 a month by visiting fableandfolly.com slash plus. And now, Fall of the House of Sunshine is offering episode commentary to Fable and Folly Plus supporters, still entirely ad-free. Fable and Folly Plus. Sign up today at fableandfolly.com slash plus. I'm not sure where we got off, but Chapman seemed confident. Upon leaving the ghosts, we trudged in the hills for a while until Chapman pointed to a crumbling city on a nearby hilltop. There, he said. As we began the climb, Chapman let me in on his research. He told me that Elihu had given him a stone that they had taken from a Buddhist monastery during their time in China. The stone was said to have come from the west and was carved with a small map. This map, Chapman said, proved that this was the location of one of the eight cities of dental law from after the great plackening destroyed Champopolis and scattered the dentites at the end of the first age. This city, he said, was Malarium. We entered through a crumbling baked earth gate. I started examining the eroded buildings in small caves. In one, I found some ancient coins. Upon these were stamped images of kings, but the reverse had what looked like a bicuspid. I put them in my pouch. I had already sent back the other artifacts I'd collected to Numola for further study. Chapman, though, was like a hound on a rabbit. He made a beeline for a corner of the city. He started digging around. I went over to him, and he showed me in a corner of the wall a cross was carved, and among it several undulating lines. He then told me his true intentions. This, he said, was a temple of the Scobalists. They were an ancient offshoot of Christianity that broke with the church in the second century. They worshipped the Ark of the Expulsion. In this Ark was truly the greatest treasure of the world. In the garden, Adam and Eve were pure and untouched by the troubles of man. But once they ate of the fruit of knowledge, they were cursed by God. Eve would know the pain of childbirth, and they would have to live in the dirt. They would become imperfect. And when imperfect creatures cannot fully process what they eat, they defecate. So it was only upon leaving the garden that Adam and Eve first defecated. But in this first defecation was the remains of the tree of knowledge, and in it the seeds of that tree which they had consumed. It was said that this first feces had magical properties, healing powers, because it still contained the remnants of Eden. In fact, the sins of the flood were caused over various factions fighting over this feces. God hoped that the flood would wipe the memories and the feces itself from the earth. But after the flood, a dung beetle rolled the feces to Noah's son Ham, who upon seeing it was struck by a vision of the serpent. The serpent told him to hide this from his brothers, and he did so. And so in secret the feces was passed down from the descendants of Ham and taken to the far reaches of the east. Eventually it was forgot and kept with other possessions in a storehouse of a desert king. 
until in a dream the king of the desert had a dream in which Jesus appeared to him and told him to build a box for the feces and to become a wanderer and renounce his kingdom. In the storehouse the king found the feces and prostrated himself before it and took it into his arms. The king built the ark of the expulsion to house the feces and left his kingdom to never return. He founded a small sect of Christians called the Scabalaists. They had power and say in the early church, but their obsession with the feces eventually caused a rift that could not be repaired. They were ridiculed and hunted down. It was only a small enclave of pagan tooth worshippers who gave them shelter. The Dentites, I breathed. Yes, Chapman said. There it was that their worlds co-mingled and the first Dentites learned of Christianity and how God and Ur-Tooth are linked in the holy Dentine of the universe. They gave them safe harbor and let them build a temple. This temple! That's amazing, I said. So you want to collect some stones from the temple or... Much more than that, Chapman replied. The seeds of the Tree of Knowledge are strong. They are waiting, hibernating in that feces throughout time. If we retrieve them, we can plant them and grow Eden anew. We can grow and feast upon the Tree of Knowledge and gain the wisdom of all things. But, I stammered, that's impossible. No, he replied. It's our destiny, and I believe the Ark of Expulsion is right here in this temple. And with that, he began to dig, and soon enough, there was the sound of a shovel hitting hard stone. Brushtown Stories is a Roy Gold production. It was written by Jonathan Goldberg with music by David Riglieri. Bernard Glouch is James Kennedy. Find out more about the show and cast at podmusical.com. Find out more about your artistic side by writing some poetry. It's really not as hard as you think. Just take a deep breath and then let your soul release the dreams it's been cooking, allowing it to touch the nerve that runs between you and the strings of the cosmos. Or maybe some limericks about cats. Whatever, we're not picky. Inspiration comes in all forms and can strike at any time. So remember to bring your moleskin. Thanks for listening and have a suntabulous bicuspid of a day. The Fable and Folly Network where fiction producers flourish.